Hello, everybody. I am truly excited to be sitting here today and to open this Collective Trauma Summit with all of you, with all of our amazing team members that helped in the last eight months to make this summit to what it has become. There was a, a lot of work going on in the background over a long period of time to bring together this amazing summit. And now we are here. Now is the day where we um, can start and we are all excited. We had, I always say I made myself uh, the best present I could give to myself was to do this summit because I had, I'm one of the four interviewers as well. And um, I had an amazing time speaking to amazing people that are interested in in aspects or collective trauma as such or aspects of it. And so I believe we have put together for you an amazing package, uh, very interesting conversations, high-level speakers that bring a lot of experience and a lot of competence from various fields and various backgrounds. Uh, ethical backgrounds uh, from various religions. So there's a whole variety of, of speakers and we are really happy about that. I believe the remedy to collective trauma is us, is we need to come together and to really have a deep look and a deep exploration of where we come from for us to have a, a wider, more open, more innovative future. And that's why we are so let's let me talk a little bit to why collective trauma i mean trauma in the last decades there are many experts that started to explore um, what trauma is the trauma is actually not the experience that we have that is overwhelming that is very painful that is traumatic but actually is the response within our bodies within our psyches within our nervous systems that um that has a, a special cycle that, that has been studied a lot. And we know that trauma is not only shock trauma. Let's say when somebody has an accident, a car accident, or something strong happens to one person. But that from the beginning of our life, from conception on, there's a very sensitive process going on in order to, to develop our human capacities, and especially to develop our capacity to relate. To, the, to relate to ourselves, to relate to others, to relate to the world, to relate to spirit, to relate to nature. And that fragile process can be easily hurt. So the developmental process of children, of all of us, to get to this point, to listen here today, and to be in this world 2019 today, um, was a long journey. And in, in many places, this journey was also fragile, could be hurt, and maybe we are dealing today with that hurt. And that we know that the function in us, the trauma function in us, is actually something that life developed over thousands and thousands of years. So that trauma responds within our nervous systems, the fragmentation and the dealing with a lot of stress and with a lot of pain or numbing ourselves, that's something that helped us to survive better, to, to stay in a place of action in order to be able to react or respond in a, in a situation. And so we know a lot about uh, scientifically and through therapeutic interventions. There's a lot of knowledge in the world today already about trauma, and there are some leading experts, and some of them are with us here, um, on that summit. And there is, I believe, a much wider net that trauma didn't start with us. It didn't start with my attachment trauma. It didn't start with what happened to me in my life. But the trauma is actually going on for thousands of years as well. And, and there's a huge net in my ancestors, my parents, my grandparents, my grand-grandparents, and so on, there's a huge chain where life wanted to live and life dealt with many, many overwhelming and difficult situations. And also life developed a lot of resilience that sits in my cells, in my psychology, in my body, in my way of interacting, in the way we build societies. So 
not only has the hurt been passed on, but also so many lifetimes of actually turning that hurt into resilience, into in intelligent growth. And that's amazing. And all of this sits in our bodies and in our psyches today. Part of our contemplative journey today is that I see, wow, my body is not 49 years old, but my body is actually hundreds of thousands of years old and older because life had a long journey to come up to this point in time. My nervous system is very, very old. Many lifetimes have built the complexity and the capacity of my and your and our nervous system. So the, the consciousness that we can experience, create, and live through today has a long journey, a high complexity, is super intelligent, and is also easily being hurt. And, and through my work of the last 15 or 18 years, there was a point in my work where, and I, and I started to do a lot of work in, in Europe and Germany, and then with the Holocaust came up in, the, in my retreats and workshops. And, and it showed me like a, a process that started to happen over and over again, where suddenly the dimension of collective trauma, as I call it today, came up again and again and again. And so I started to study that. And, and then more and more I understood, wow, there is actually a big ghost in the machine. The machine is us. It's our biocomputer. It's, our, it's the part in us that is actually invisible because that's its nature. And so the collective unconscious holds a lot of unintegrated information that we unconsciously need to deal with all the time. And it's, there's a difference if a, so we call it collective trauma because there's a difference if an individual has been traumatized within a more or less stable surrounding or if there were big events like wars or natural catastrophes or genocides in, in certain areas of the world that had an immediate massive impact of pain, of suffering, and uh, trauma at once on a huge population. And I believe we are sitting all around the world. On the one hand, we could say the world looks very beautiful from outer space because we see this beautiful blue marble in space. But I believe if we look through another lens, we see that the tissue of this world, the living tissue of this world, which includes the natural environment and the, all, the, all life on the planet, actually has been also immensely hurt. And that brought me to the understanding that a lot of our medical and health understanding of social symptoms, collective social symptoms, political issues, climate change, many collective symptoms that we see nowadays actually have a deep invisible root. And that root, I believe, is ours to um, discover. I often say collective trauma is like you grow up in, a, in an apartment and you never leave that apartment. And one day somebody comes to visit you and asks you, hey, how does your, the house that your apartment is in look like? That's very interesting because has anyone ever been outside of a traumatized collective? When maybe my parents, the teachers that taught me in school or the university and, and society around me displayed symptoms of traumatization, my nervous system, everything that conditioned me, how I learned, was partly out of free flow 
but partly also out of separation, distancing, numbness, emotional retraction, or hyperreactivity. And so I learned that that's the world we are living in. And I believe every one of us learned it, more or less. And so when we, when we talk about collective trauma, the interesting thing is that it, it's very hard to have kind of an outside perspective. It's like we are going together into a jungle, maybe with a, a light or a torchlight, but nobody has been in there really fully and looked at it from a kind of an objective perspective. And so um, three years ago, uh, my wife, Chulitza Sportas, and I initiated uh, the nonprofit organization, The Pocket Project, which is also the main sponsor of the summit. And The Pocket Project is actually kind of a nonprofit initiative to, um, to do collective trauma integration work globally. And so there are training programs and there are many people that feel attracted uh, to the collective trauma work that are already part of it and can join. So it's a, it's a non-profit organization that also led up to the summit because the work that we did there and we did before actually uh, made the summit possible. And, and also many of the people that are speakers at the summit also are people that I met on my travels and journeys throughout the world and and felt the resonance with and and invited them now to this summit in order for you to get an interdisciplinary uh, wider range of perspectives where we come from different fields epigenetics and trauma research and uh, the uh, UN work and all kinds of uh, perspectives that are looking at what's that phenomenon, what is it about, and also the main question, what can we do about it? And I believe that we are also the answer, like the answer to collective trauma is a collective answer. It's like us coming together and improving and learning more about our relational capacities because a lot of the trauma in the world actually has been inflicted through inappropriate relations. And, and the restoration of relation is something that is deeply accessible to all of us if we want it, if we choose it. And it's not always easy, but it's a path that we can walk. So there is an individual dimension of restoration, integration, and then there is a collective dimension, and I believe we are walking into a world that needs global collaboration, ways how to deal with climate change, ways how to deal with global inequality, with many, many global issues. And I believe um, many of them grapple with the sand in the engine that makes it hard. So we can put climate goals but we also see that, that it's hard to uh, work our way up to them. And, and I believe one reason is that we, are, that we are dealing with an invisible guest within our living room, our collective living room. And I think the time is ripe, the zeitgeist is ripe, also through the very technology that we are using right now, that there is a very high collective um, connectivity we are data is speeding up so we are there's a synchronization a global learning synchronization and i think that plays into our hands if it doesn't lead to the fact that we are less related which is i think an important shadow symptom of technology but if it helps us to be actually more related then um, this is the time i believe where our understanding of healing of integration, of collective trauma integration becomes possible. And we see it at the moment there's a lot of polarization in the world, there's a lot of tension coming up, and I believe this is the time where we actually can become like a collective answer to the collective questions 
they're the driving our evolution. And speaking of evolution, um, the the force in in ourselves, the force within our nervous systems that is needed to fragment our inner world in order to to freeze a part of the pain that is too overwhelming to experience in a traumatizing moment, as we said, on the one hand, is an intelligent function in us that helps us to survive better, for example. And at the same time, if we don't take care of that fragmentation, it will have a lot of symptoms in our life. And so we we need the energy, the the, the the amount of emotional information and, and, and pain that is stored and the energy that it needs to store it, the healing process or the integration process actually liberates double amount of energy for the freedoms of our life, for the, the evolution of our life and the evolution of humanity because that can become a new drive for where we are going to. And liberate the space for innovation and insight and creativity and new ways of dealing with the current issues. And it's interesting that sometimes people are saying, okay, if we, we need to act now. Yeah, we need to act now in new ways in order not to create the difficulties of the past. So there's an, there's an, active participation in the world and together with the sort of looking back with the integration of it what what we didn't integrate yet it's a powerful boost to build a new world together and because if you don't look at the things that are still kind of suffering and pain and separation in us, we will keep acting from a place of separation. And one of the basic trauma symptoms, as you will hear also throughout the summit, is a sense of separation. That one of the underlying symptoms of a traumatized world is that we experience ourselves and others as separate. Separate within ourselves from myself, separate from you, separate from the natural environment, separate from spirit. And that, that means that I will act in ways that are maybe more often reactive than responsive. And the beautiful English word responsibility means I have the ability to respond to my life circumstances. And we have the ability to respond to our life circumstances. But that means that I first have to have the experience and the felt awareness of our life circumstances. And I I believe that's what the individual and the collective trauma healing work can give us, that we are more in touch with ourselves, that we are more connected to ourselves and to our vocation in the world, and that we are more able to relate to each other and create meaningful, insightful, creative, and innovative spaces together that help us to be more present, more alive in our world in order to create the world together that we want to live in. So it's, it's an actual liberation and it, 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 it allows us to experience more. And that's important because what, when we look into the world, what we often see is a sense of scarcity, like something's lacking. And I believe for, for many of us that experience trauma in our world, it comes with a sense of lack. Either I'm lacking my vocation, I'm lacking something in my expression in the world, I'm lacking resources, I'm lacking connection, intimacy, love, compassion, clarity. So there is a lack, something's missing. And there is a kind of a frozen, a frozen area in life 
And that frozen area creates a collective lack. Something's missing. And we all know what are the symptoms of that lack or scarcity. And I believe trauma healing creates a sense of richness, of connectedness, that relation and meaningful depth nourishes us much deeper. And then some of the symptoms of that scarcity are actually dropping away naturally. And so since, since we are living in a world where the natural resources need to be dealt with in a, in a very intelligent and collaborative way, because we are many human beings on the planet, we know that we need to invent new systems where the distribution and the way we use natural resources um, need new ways. So we, we really need to take care of it. And I think the same as the data speed is speeding up in, in the technological world, if we integrate our individual and collective traumatization, the data speed within our nervous systems are increasing in the same way. So the intelligence within the person and the intelligence within the technical technological system actually can be upgraded together so that we develop the consciousness that is needed in order to operate the technology that we are developing nowadays. And I believe that's truly exciting. So the zeitgeist is the tailwind and I believe that the fact that 40,000 people signed up until now, and I'm sure it's going to get more over the next days during the summit, um, shows that there is a deep interest, that it, it resonates with what's happening right now for us in life. And it truly gives us a, a possibility for healing, integration, development, and new insight into our hands. That the knowledge that is already there in science, as many of the speakers brought in, um, is truly exciting. And also the ways how uh, that have been developed in order to work uh, on it and to create meaningful changes in people's lives, I think is already a fact. And to feel the resonances inside and to also hear that, you know, even if sometimes things look darker in the world and look difficult. There's also amazing work that's going on in order to take care of it and find new ways. And I think for many, also for some of the speakers that they shared it anyway throughout the, the interviews, that there is a, um, the trauma is part of our suffering but for many people, really giving the time and energy that it needs to, to transform our traumatization into, into aliveness and creativity and integration actually paved their way, became their vocation. And that the resilience that we can uh, get through, through integrating our traumatization is actually a deep, deep learning that life um, can go through. And in our meditation, I want to take us also to participate in the resilience that life created because healing didn't start with us and healing happened thousands and thousands of years before us already. And we are sitting, our immune systems, our bodies, our genetics, our, our nervous systems, are kind of the expression of that learning and that resilience um, that life expressed. So I believe um, we are living in exciting times. We are living in times where it really needs our participation. And also at Otto Sharma, as Otto Sharma phrased it, it's kind of the the opposite of participation is absencing, as he calls it, is are all the parts of us that are not participating in this moment and as are the parts of our societies that are not participating in taking care of the current challenges. Like a, a symphony orchestra where some of the musicians simply don't show up and you want to play 
a concert, but parts of us and part of the orchestra isn't showing up. And and I believe that um, what you're going to hear and what you can participate in um, shows us ways how we can show up more and actually be a deeper contribution to the world of today. <laughs>